Hi, my name's Chris and I'm growing hops. It's May 20th, 2012, and I thought I'd do just one update on the hops this year so that you get so everyone knows exactly what's going on with these things as they actually approach maturity. It's uh it's the May 24 long weekend here in Canada, big party and vacation weekend here. And it's uh mad dog and Englishman weather. It's probably about 30 degrees. It's been a strange spring. We've had a very warm period in March that got everything started early. A seasonal and chilly April, and now it's May and the weather has been gorgeous. And the hops are very happy. So, just let me adjust the camera here. What we've got on the left here is uh, the pair of cascade vines. If you recall, I moved the Zeus out of this bed and replaced it with my spare cascade. Uh, what we've got is both cascades and they have already, in fact, reached the top of the trellis. What I'm doing this year, I haven't done it to these guys yet, is I'm actually going to be topping them at the top of the trellis. I got a lot of uh, curling over and growing back up again and a big ball at the top of the trellis last year. This is an experiment. I don't know if it'll help my yields or not, but I'm hoping for more secondary shoots. All of the hops this year, but especially down here, they are sending off a ton of runners. Their root system has grown substantially. This is very normal down here. Shoots coming out of the ground. This one's only a couple feet away. But if I follow down the background here, I did recently do a trimming back here, so maybe not so many of them. But uh, basically, I'm getting runners about three or four feet. Here's another one over here. Um, they're trying to get wherever they can. Along the sides here, I did put in a uh, an edging, but I'm going to have to put an edging in around all of them because they really do want to expand. Their root system is extremely healthy. Those are the cascades, and the cascades are actually the ones that haven't grown quite so much. Once again, on the other side, we have on the left the Mount Hood, on the right the Willamette, and if you just look at them in how full they actually already are, how much they've actually reached the top, and as you can see, I have been taking advantage of this trellis to get to the top and chop those tops. I want to see how that helps me this year. But these guys are in incredibly good shape. It isn't even June. They're at the top of the trellis. They're sending out a ton of secondary shoots. This is what happens in here. I will show you. Basically you get side shoots coming off. They want to join up. They want to they want to connect across the gap. This is a problem. Uh, in fact, if I were to do this again, I would make sure that I was putting the same variety on both sides because they get mixed up. And I'm trying to keep them separate this year, but it's a, it's a fight. And uh, let's take a look down here. You can see, um, well, I guess I did a good job at actually cleaning these up yesterday, so I don't have as much to show you here. But I have been finding that there are literally dozens of shoots coming out of the ground. You really want only a few seriously healthy binds climbing the rope. The rest, the logic that I've got is I want to keep trimming them back, but they keep coming back. As you can see down here and down the cascades, there are a lot of these guys, and just yesterday I was in here clipping literally two, three dozen of them. So that's the main trellis, and this is what it looks like if I take a step back. It is a thing of beauty. It should be taller. It isn't taller, unfortunately. I know I've had thoughts about extending the height of it. I can't really justify it. Year one, I got a pound of hops off of all the vines. That's dried weight. Year two, I got two pounds of hops off of, off of all the... And that's actually as much as I can use, especially if I want to actually get some pellets for variety. Um, I don't know what I'm going to get this year. Again, I've made a change in how I'm managing these vines. It may reduce my yield, we'll see. But other, if it doesn't reduce my yield, I wouldn't be surprised to see three pounds, maybe? We'll find out. And that's going to be a lot of work to pick, too. Each of these probably takes up about an hour to pick each one. Uh, it's, it's, it's the effort of a, of a couple of evenings. So I had one more vine. That's the Zeus vine. And that's off over here. So let's go take a look at it. If you remember, I have been 
training the Zeus line to provide us with a bit of shade here on the deck. And this year it is not disappointing. I've been threading these through the trellis by hand. It isn't a very good trellis for fines because the gaps are so small, but if you're on it, you can basically spread it out. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that's the deck side. On the other side, as you can see, it is basically just a great big green wall. And it's getting bigger all the time. This Zeus is incredible. I mean, it is absolutely incredible. It's a shame that it makes a very stinky hop that you don't actually want to brew with very much. It's a good bittering hop, but it is pungent. It's pungent, it is prolific, it is healthy, it is happy. It is just taking this over. And actually, I would have to say that if, if you're looking for a place to grow hops and you haven't got the backyard space, but what you have is about 10 feet or so of trellis, this, this should do very well. I mean, I got a lot of hops off of this guy last year and I just didn't expect it. But the, the, the cones and the clumps of cones were healthier they were greener, they were happier than even what I had planted over on the trellis. It's actually kind of a shame that I had put the Zeus here. Uh, so this is something you can consider if you've got somewhere where you can put in a, you know, decorative hop plant and, and still get some, some, some harvest off of it. So, actually over here too, you can also see that what I've done is I've actually started clipping the tops of these guys in hopes of actually getting them to spread out more rather than reach for the sky and then curl around and then bend over and then occasionally snap under their own weight. It does happen. So, that is the state of the hops on May 20th, 2012. And uh, I'm going to go back to my beer.